little longer than you know what I thought. So therefore, my apologies for all those of you who have been waiting. Thank you, Samir Goelji, for uh, sharing this event. Uh, Suchitra Ellagaru, who doesn't really need an introduction in this pandemic, I think uh, one of the most visible faces that we've been seeing on television, papers, and everywhere. Suchitra, you don't see us very often. I think you should uh, also meet with us, the government, more often and tell us you know, what else we need to be doing. Now that we are almost at the end of the pandemic, hopefully, that is. <laughs> You did, you did. Thank you. Thank you for Covaxin. Um, she, Jayesh Ranjan Garu, my Principal Secretary of Industry, Commerce and Information Technology. Vagish Dixit, my dear friend. Shobha Dixit ji. And uh, to the distinguished uh, gathering here, I see many friends, I see many colleagues. I see, in fact, uh, ex-CII uh, you know, office bearers here. So, Really delighted to be here. Thank you very much uh, for inviting me to this uh, wonderful location. You know, it's been, a, it's been an interesting time the last couple of years. You know, most of the events have been virtual. Most, uh, most of the meetings have been virtual. So, in fact, when, it, when you get an invite to a physical event these days, it seems, like a, it seems like a surprise. It seems like a out of the ordinary thing to do. So, always a pleasure attending the Manic C event, which is where, in fact, I think uh, the same venue we had attended this a couple of years ago. So firstly, thank you for organizing this and uh, most importantly for focusing on technology and how technology can possibly drive resilience in manufacturing and how it can take you know, the economy forward in the days to come. See, the extent of technology usage is possibly what distinguishes developed economies and the developing ones. I think if you look at uh, what's happening the world over, if you look at the first world versus uh, us, I think uh, the difference couldn't be more stark. Especially the recent COVID pandemic has clearly shown us the importance of technology and digitization, the growth and survival of institutions and enterprises. Businesses who have embraced technology, who have adapted to technology quickly, have survived, have thrived, have grown faster. Businesses who have not embraced technology, of course, either have lost steam or have, in fact, some have perished also. So it becomes incumbent on us, the government, industry, private sector, and all the associations also, including CII, to spread more awareness about digital technologies and what it is that we need to be looking forward to in the next one decade to come also. We hear things like Industry 4.0, we hear things like uh, emerging technologies, but how do we ensure that we work in tandem to understand what the world really needs and what India can provide in terms of solutions? COVID has been a major disruption for all of us, not just government, or the industry, but I think for entire humanity, it has been a huge, huge uh, disruption. But the government of Telangana, in fact, especially my principal secretary, Jay Shranjan, I believe has been responding, wherever I've been to, any association, any industry, has been responding, <laughs> has been swift, has been very, very, very agile, you know, in terms of protecting the business interests of many, many business houses in the state of Telangana. Even during the lockdown, when industry had to run, when industry had to, you know, adjust and, you know, really adopt to the new situations, new challenges, I think the government was there, hand-holding you, guiding you, ensuring that it went as smoothly as, you know, we could. Telangana is one of the first states also, in fact, uh, to have lifted the lockdown quickly and ensured that uh, lockdown restrictions, rather, so that, you know, even after the first wave of COVID, we ensured that most industries permit, you know, function to the maximum permissible extent, so therefore your economic activity would not take a severe hit. We also have lobbied with the central government several times for development of a coordinated strategy, especially for the medium, micro and uh, the small entrepreneurs. I feel that the support for MSMEs should definitely extend beyond the Atmanirbhar package. The government of India talked about a 20 lakh crore stimulus package. Now, I've been saying this and I, can, I will continue to say it till Government of India, in fact, takes a relook at what they've been doing. You know, packages in our country cannot be eyewash. Packages in our country cannot be merely there on the paper. They have to translate, percolate, help businesses create more wealth, help businesses create more employment, which is what, you know, governments ought to be looking at. It cannot be a philosophical or a theoretical approach to ensuring that industry survives and thrives. 
it has to be practical, it has to be pragmatic. So we will continue to make that case. We feel that uh, you know, the packages that have been declared uh, ha are definitely have not had the desired impact on MSMEs particularly. And even the production-linked incentive scheme, which was again launched as part of the Atmanirbhar package, also is not pragmatic. This is something we have said in the past. We will continue to say it again in the interest of the MSMEs based in Telangana and elsewhere in the country also. In 2019, our government in Telangana has launched the Telangana State Global Linker for Digitality, supporting MSMEs by creating free websites and e-stores for them to provide a host of online services so that even in the uh, you know, pandemic, their services are, inter are, are disrupted minimally. Another portal called Kirana Linker was also launched along with Confederation of All India Traders and Global Linker was also supporting the Kirana stores and general public during the lockdown period in 2020. And today we've also launched Made in Telangana, an online mall for supporting all local manufacturers and retailers. And I request all of you and especially the association to spread the good word, to help it, you know, reach maximum number of uh, small and micro enterprises so that they can take full advantage of this. Telangana government has also recently joined hands with the Union Ministry of Electronics and Information Technology, METI, to set up a very important center called as the National Center for Additive Manufacturing. Now this center, abbreviated as NCAM, will promote additive manufacturing, 3D printing ecosystem, encourage prototyping of new products, and provide access to infrastructure. The center, this center will provide a big boost to local industries as they will be able to avail all these services right in our backyard in our own city, Hyderabad. Our homegrown initiative of Telangana government called as the Tea Works, which has been active in nurturing a culture of makers and innovators, has been developing drones and other industrial equipment for supporting industries and also startups. This initiative is now ready to be availed by all the industries in the state of Telangana. More importantly, I urge again CII, I think as an institution, you have been empowered by your members to spread the good word on these two important institutions, NCAM, the National Center for Additive Manufacturing, and T-Works, so that your members can avail these facilities. All these initiatives and many others have helped Telangana in emerging as one of the most sought-after destinations for investment in the country. Our progressive policies and proactive government support have enabled us to attract several important investments in the past few months, even during the COVID times. Our flagship initiative, called as the TSI Pass, has helped in attracting investments of over 2,20,000 crores and has provided employment to over 16 lakh people in the past seven years. In fact, uh, even during the pandemic, companies such as Goldman Sachs, Kitex, Ivanhoe Cambridge, Premier Energies, Gloucester Limited, Gokuldas Images, Integrated Gas Technologies, Pocona Engineered Stone, Triton Electric Vehicles, Ivanti, Malabar Gold, and several others have chosen to invest in Telangana. Recently, we also have received delegations and investment interest from countries such as Taiwan, Colombia, Poland, France, Denmark, and others, and have welcomed investments from several global players. We are even looking to develop dedicated clusters, industrial clusters for some of them. CII Hyderabad and CII Telangana has played an important role in supporting government through various industry-related initiatives. Recently, we discussed with CII leadership on important proposals which we would like to take up with their support. I would like to highlight some of the key proposals which will be taken up in the next few months. CII is working towards the fourth industrial revolution with digital and smart manufacturing and will take up clusters in Telangana to pilot several projects. And this is something, again, the members of CII need to make a note of. Government of Telangana is also working on green and sustainability projects for ensuring a greener state. These include retrofitting the transform, re retrofitting to transform and reuse existing buildings wherever possible, and also working towards net zero, reducing the net load of carbon emissions on the environment down to zero, and also encouraging green and sustainable companies. CII will be working with uh, the Digital Employment Exchange of Telangana, abbreviated as DEET, a government initiative to develop model career centers. Society of Indian Defense Manufacturers of CII will also launch a chapter in Telangana 
to work closely with central government on defense related matters. Greening of data centers and warehouses will also be taken up by the CII Green Building Council. The ICON convention launched nationwide by CII to connect startups with industry will also include a Telangana session on the sidelines of Make in Telangana event on 27th November this year. I'd like to once again congratulate all of you, especially those who have won awards. But let me also quickly take a few minutes to talk about you know, a couple of things. The one thing I wanted to highlight is uh, a recent uh, report that has been released by the Reserve Bank of India, which shows you know, it's not just the government of Telangana or a minister in Telangana that is basically talking about how well Telangana has done in the last seven years. A recently released report by RBI, a handbook of statistics, you know, compiling the performance of uh, various governments across the country, all states, in fact, across the country, has shown three important things. The first thing, Telangana's population is only 2.5% of India, but our contribution to Indian GDP is 5% to Indian, the entire country. The second important aspect I wanted to highlight is Telangana today, in fact, we are, if you look at us geographically, we are the 12th largest state in India. If you look at, if you look at us population-wise, we're the 11th largest state in India. But the RBI report also showed that Telangana, in spite of being the 12th largest geographically and 11th largest population-wise, we are the fourth largest contributor to Indian economy. And the three states that precede us in that list are West Bengal, Maharashtra, and Tamil Nadu, which are significantly larger than us. So the, what, that, what does that tell you? What that tells you is that Telangana continues to punch much, much above its weight. While our population might be small, our heart is big. We have a big heart when it comes to contributing to this nation. And we continue to inspire the nation with our progressive policies. TSI pass, for instance, in fact, I was just telling the Commerce Secretary that uh, TSI pass is really which was passed, which was legislated about nearly seven years now. This November, it will be the seventh year of TSI pass. Now today, the government of India has literally finally woken up and they have decided that they'll also do a single window system in the lines of TSI pass. I can go on and tell you so many other nice things that we've done, but let me just add a couple of things. What we believe as a state government is that any performing state should be incentivized, should be encouraged, should in fact be given a pat on the back. We've launched a number of initiatives. We've made a number of requests to government of India. You know, Telangana, geographically, if you look at us, we're bang in the middle of the country. Hyderabad, particularly, is logistically extremely well located. We have made, the, we have made a mention of this not once, but several times to government of India. We have told them, we've reminded them that Telangana is an important state from a country's perspective. Hyderabad is an important economic engine from a national perspective. So therefore, we requested them for industrial corridors between Hyderabad, Bangalore, Hyderabad, Nagpur, Hyderabad, Warangal, Hyderabad, Vijayawada. We have made several requests. Unfortunately, in the last seven and a half years, none of them have been heeded to. No response whatsoever from the government of India. Also, in fact, when the state, United States was divided and Telangana was carved out about seven years ago, seven and a half years ago, there was a clear promise made on the floor of the parliament that all the industries in the new, newly formed states of Telangana and the newly formed state of Andhra Pradesh will be given special incentives to promote industrialization, to promote more employment creation. It's been seven and a half years. Again, zero delivery on that. Likewise, let me also tell you, our Honorable Chief Minister, Shri K. Chanshekar Augaru, in the interest of the industry, in the interest of creation of employment for locals, had launched large industrial parks. Because today, if you look at the world, if you really want to compete with a manufacturing, large manufacturing nation like China, we cannot be using these small little industrial parks we have. So we decided to go on scale. We decided to la launch large industrial parks, mega industrial parks, a pharma city, of the size of 19,000 acres and a Kakatiya mega textile park, 1,200 acres, we have launched already. Unfortunately, again, we've been pleading with government of India to support us. We said, you know, it's in the country's interest to support us, to ensure that this 
projects kick off so that the whole Make in India campaign, the whole self-reliant India campaign does not remain a slogan on paper, but will translate into something more meaningful for the nation, will create jobs and will make India prosper. Unfortunately, again, government of India does not want to believe that a state like Telangana, which has come out with many pioneering policies, can also lead the country on these important industrial initiatives. No support there either. Also, what's even more, what's even more uh, you know, uh, saddening is the erstwhile government before 2014 in Delhi, the United Progressive Alliance, the UPA, had sanctioned what was called an ITIR project for the state of Telangana, for, this, for the city of Hyderabad, an information technology investment region. We have made in the last seven and a half years, and today I'm sharing all of this with you for two, two simple reasons. One, of course, to continue to make a case for the benefit of our state. Two, also, you know, in spite of several efforts in, in closed doors, you know, through letters, etc., nothing seems to work. So maybe, you know, an open appeal, maybe an appeal to the powers to be in New Delhi that these need to be looked at, these need to be, you know, uh, reviewed, might again work, hopefully. So we've tried to ensure ITIR is restored and ITIR will give a much needed fillip to the city of Hyderabad and also to the state of Telangana in furthering our expansion on information technology. Of course, Telangana has been growing brilliantly on IT. We have been doing well, but we could have done even better if ITIR was a reality. They have scrapped ITIR and there is no contingency plan whatsoever. They have no clue on what needs to be done you know, to ensure that IT continues to grow at the same pace which it has been growing at. And also, we have made several requests. You know, what, what makes a city import, attractive from an investment perspective? Of course, it, it is the incentives, it is the land, water, power, stable environment, law and order, etc., etc. But what also makes a city or a state very, very important from investment perspective is the manpower, the human resources. Apart from IIT Hyderabad, in the last seven and a half years, IIT Hyderabad also came, I think it was 10 years ago, Murti Garu? 13 years ago. Ever since this government has come in Delhi in the last seven and a half years, we have been making requests for Indian Institute of Management. We have sought a National Institute of Design. We have sought a triple IT in Karimnagar. We have sought medical colleges. We have sought a tribal university. We have sought an ICER. Unfortunately, none of these seem to come to Hyderabad. Even if a bullet train has to come, it only travels between Delhi and Mumbai via Gujarat. Doesn't seem to find its way to Hyderabad or you know any part of uh, you know any part which is south of India. So I don't know why, but that seems to be the case. The point I'm trying to make is there were several other things I can talk about. You know what union government has denied us, etc. In spite of all this, Telangana continues to perform. In spite of all this, Telangana continues to do very well. But if the government of India really is serious about ensuring that we grow as a nation, if they are very serious about self-reliant India campaign, if they are very serious about the Make in India campaign, I think they have to continue to encourage states like Telangana, which are progressive, states like Telangana, which continue to punch above their weight, states like Telangana, which continue to help and contribute in national building, in nation building. Today, I'm proud as a citizen of Telangana, not as a minister, but as a citizen of Telangana, that the taxes we pay help the nation in improving infrastructure in Uttar Pradesh, in Bihar, in Gujarat, in other parts of the country. I'm not parochial to say that, you know, every dollar or every rupee I contribute should come back to Telangana. But the fact is, not even, not even one half of what we pay comes back to Telangana. So my request to the union government through this podium, through this forum, is that they need to relook, they need to review all the commitments, all the promises they've made to the state of Telangana, and also the state of Andhra Pradesh, which is our sister state, and honor them fully. Once again, I compliment all the award winners. I compliment CII for organizing this wonderful event. Thank you very much for this wonderful opportunity. <laughs>